Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to look up the critical value using the t-table. and This is for hypothesis testing. You'll also need to use a similar technique when you're looking up uh, the value, t-value for confidence intervals. So let's have a recap on the shape of the t-distribution. Now the t-distribution like the normal is symmetrical but with slightly wider tails, fatter tails main thing to note it is symmetrical all right and also that a random variable that follows a t distribution can take any number on the real line so very negative numbers very large positive numbers or anything in between now when we are doing hypothesis testing recall that we have to to decide is it a one tail test or two tail test so now how do we recognize a test is one tailed we recognize it by looking at the alternative hypothesis so here is an expression h1 for the alternative some parameter which I call theta is less than that's what we're looking for is less than a number which I call theta zero now if it's less than then that means our critical value is going to be a negative value so I put here minus and C so that is our critical value which we need to find and the alpha here will be typically at 5% so we talk about doing a test at the 5% significance level and uh, usually alpha is picked at 1, 5 or 10% but if the question doesn't say, we usually do it just at the 5% because then it's between 1 and 10. If we have the alternative that the parameter is bigger than some number, then we look at the right tail. So here, in that case, the critical value will be a positive number. And again, that shaded region will be alpha. So part of it is to find the value of C, minus C or plus C, depending on which tail we are looking at. And then we come on to a two-tail test. We can recognize that the test is two-tail. H1 will be of the form that the parameter does not equal to a number. And in that case, the critical values will be minus C, where C is a number, and plus C. And the shaded region adds up to alpha so using the idea that the fact that the distribution is symmetrical you've got you've got a half in each tail so if alpha was five percent it'll be two and a half in this tail and two and a half percent in this tail now to find the critical value we need the following things let's write them down we need to know are we looking at a one-tailed or is it a two-tailed thing we're looking at. Now if it's a test it's going to be one or two-tailed. If it's confidence intervals we're after it's two-tailed. Next we're after the if it's a test, we're after the alpha. What is the alpha? Is it given? It's going to be 1, 5, or 10%. And as we said, if the question doesn't tell you, you ju it's just five. Just pick the standard 5%. Actually, there's a better rule for selecting 1, 5, or 10, but if we do it simply, we'll just say, just do it at the 5% if the question doesn't tell you which one to do it at. Also, we need to know what they call the degree of freedom that's the parameter for the T what is it we need so we need these three pieces of information in order to look up the critical value let's have a look at what the T table critical values of the T table looks like this is from our website statistics mentor now see here in the rows first two rows were set is that concerns the tail area, the alpha. Is it a one tail test we're doing or is it a two tail test? And notice that the area is doubled going from one to two. 
each column. And then we need to know the degree of freedom. And then finally, the stuff in the body, the numbers in the body of the table here, they are the, the critical values. Notice that they are all positive. So if we were looking, doing a one-tail test on the left-hand side, we would have to take the negative value, as we'll see shortly. Right, first question. Say we're doing a one-tail test. The, al the alternative hypothesis is that parameter theta is bigger than a number, say it's 2. Degree of freedom, just say it's 5. The alpha, say it's 5%. What's the critical value? Okay, a quick sketch here, T distribution. Okay, now, which tail are we looking at, left or right? We're looking at the, the answer is we're looking at the right tail because the alternative hypothesis, H1, has got here greater than. If it's greater than, we look to the right tail. Remember, if it's greater than, right tail. Less than, left tail. Less than, well actually, less than L for left and L for left. Uh, greater than, that's got a big R in there. Greater than, oh well, it's got R there, R stands for right. So maybe that's a way to memorize this thing. L for less, L for left, gr greater, greater than, R for right. So here we've got greater than right tail. So we after a plus C. So let's look for that C. Critical value. Okay, now we after a one tail test, we look along here. And we're after alpha of five percent, which is the same as saying naught point naught five, because we divide by one hundred. Five divided by a hundred is not point naught five. That's not point naught five, so we need to look down this column. Now Next, trace the degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom just happens to be 5 as well. Uh, all right, so here you go. 5 along here. Where did they intersect? At this number, 2.015. That is the answer. So we write C is equal to 2.015. And then to finish the question, we'll have calculated a test statistic value if that test statistic value is greater than 2.015, i.e. it's in the shade, it's along here somewhere, another way of putting it is we tend to say it's in the shaded region, this is the rejection region, another way to say it is the rejection region, um, then we reject a null in favour of the alternative. Next, say we're doing a test and the alternative hypothesis is that the parameter, just say it's mu, is less than degree of freedom 17, alpha again, say at 5%, okay sketch my graph, now is it a one tail or two tail test? I hear you say it's one tail yeah, one tail because it's not uh, here it's uh, less than, it's not, not, it's, it's not one of, it's not, e God. it's not equal to not equal to, no wonder that was a mouthful, easy just to say that uh, it's um, less than or it's, it's a form of a less than question, so it's a one tail thing. Okay, so which tail? Is it left tail or right tail? Look at that, it's less than, L for left, so down here, minus C, minus because it's on the left hand side, zero. So, since the table gives us only positive values, we use the idea of symmetry here, that that C will, in numerical value, magnitude, will be the same as plus C, okay, so that C is just the same, but it's just the opposite sign, but the area in the tail here will be the same, alpha is at 5%, so it's 5% here, 5% here. Now the T table gives us the area to the right, so this is what we're after. So we'll find the C, and then we'll just take the opposite sign. Alright, so it's degree of freedom 17 at 5%. One tail, 
5%, degree of freedom 17, run down here, 1.740, but we want, yeah, we want the opposite sign, 1.740, This here is 1.740, but we want this one because it's on the left tail. So the answer is minus 1.740. And if our test statistic is less than this figure, we reject the null. Otherwise, we do not reject the null. Okay, basically, same question. So it's a one tail test on the left hand side, degree of freedom 70 alpha is 1% to the tables so 70 and 1% one tailed one tailed 1% one so that's same as 0 0.01 0 0.01 at this stage I just want to just say something on the aside here a remark look one tailed test 0 0.1 stands for 10% 0 0.05 stands for 5% 0.025 stands for 2.5%. 0.01 stands for 1%. This stands for half a percent. We want 0.01, 1%. And we want degree of freedom 70. So go down this column to, to 70. Now what do we notice? What we notice is that there's a big gap between 60 and 120. There is no 70 in this table anyway. In some tables you might find it tabulated. But whatever you'll find, whatever table you use, you'll find that when you get to the large degree of freedom, there'll be gaps between, um, there'll be jumps between uh, these numbers. So we've got 60 to 120, 70 is between there. So I know my answer for critical value is between 2.39, 2.358. Now, how do we deal with that? Well, we could state them both and just say, oh, it's between there somewhere. you could round it to the closer of these degree of freedom so 70 is closer to 60 so we could just say oh let's just say it's 2.390 if you want to be more conservative so you want the test statistic to be larger to reject the null then you could pick say the higher value 2.358 anyway I would say since 70 is closer to 60 than 120 just say that it is just report T60 and say it's approximately 2.39 so critical value It's 2.39, but because it's a less than 1, it will be minus 2.39 will be the critical value. Okay, finally, let's say that we have this test. Alternative is that the parameter is not equal to 12. Now, is that one-tailed or two-tailed? If you say two-tailed, great the answer is two-tailed so we want that and that so it's going to be a minus C and a plus C which we report an area in the tail since it's one percent it must mean that there's half of that in each tail so half of one is half so it's half a percent in here half a percent in here and we know that if we fall anywhere between minus C and plus C we do not reject the null but if we fall if our test statistic it's bigger than plus C or it's less than minus C we will reject the null so let's go to the tables degree of freedom 1 2 1 alpha is 1% and it's a two-tailed test right it's two tails so we look on along this row 0.2 that stands for 20% 0.1 that stands for 10% 0.05 that stands for 5% 0.02 that stands for 2%, 0.01, that stands for 1%. We want this test at the 1% level, don't we? So it's 0 0.01. The degree of freedom is 121. So we go down here, 
oops, look, 120, and then it goes to infinity, doesn't it? So our answer is between 2.617, 2.576. So the gap there is of the order of 0.1, isn't it? Well, it's around 0.1. Now, because it's close to 120, you could just round down and say it's near enough to 2.617. So here will be 2.617 and minus 2.617, approximately. Now let's go back to the t-table. You can see that after 120 it jumps to infinity. So in other words, infinity is not a number, remember, it just means a very, very huge number. If we look at the differences here, we can see whether it makes much of a difference. So going 120 to infinity, 1.289 difference of 0 0.007. How about that difference of 0 0.013? So the differences aren't too big, are they? Huh? At some stage, though, if the degree of freedom is bigger than 120, you could just report the infinity figure rather than the 120. Again, it's um, up to your instructor. You could say that anything 100 bigger than 120 just report the infinity figure. All right. Other thing to note is that this infinity figure, if you r look at it closely, do you recognize any numbers along that row? I hear some of you say yes. Some of you will say, look, I recognize this particular figure. It's 1.96. That is because all the values along here for the infinity figure correspond to the standard normal. And that's uh, interesting. That is not a coincidence. And that is because of the fact that when the degree of freedom gets very large, the t becomes, resembles more and more like the standard normal. So that's why then the critical values look are the same. To finish, I want to say that the solving this is equivalent to being asked the following question. Find the probability that the absolute value of a random variable, which is t with 121 degree of freedom, is greater than c is equal to 0 0.01, where we have to find the value c. So instead of writing what I've written here, I've given you that degree of freedom. I've told you it's alpha, but I've told you it's a two-tailed test. What's the critical value? If I just ask you this question and ask you to find C, then you'd have solved it in the same way. Remember, this absolute sign just means if we write it without the absolute sign, it's just the same as saying that it's bigger than C. It's less than minus C equals to 0 0.01. Like that. So if we sketch this, that's plus C. This is negative c, c bigger than, t bigger than c is here, this bit less than minus c is here, shaded region we want is equal to 0 0.01, i.e. 1%, but the same as solving this in blue. Okay, so well done. For leaving you, remember, if you're going to look at the critical values from a t-table, you need to know, is it a one-tailed or two-tailed thing you're looking at. What is the alpha, the significance level? What is the degree of freedom? Okay. I'm Phil from Statistics Mentor.